You're listening to Unbridled with your host, Genevieve and Carly. Welcome to Unbridled. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Unbridled, and I'm your host, Genevieve. And I'm Carly. And today we have a very special guest, Stephanie Barbera. We're so excited to have you on the show. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. So we got to talk with Fred recently, which was yeah. really exciting, but I know that you're kind of the horse guru of the family, <laughs> more of the it education. Started with me. It started with me. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm excited to hear your story. How did you get into horses in general in your life? Where did that exposure happen? Um, so, um, as a kid, both of my parents liked horses. My mom really liked horses. My dad grew up in the, in Philadelphia, you know, Back when they used horses still to deliver milk and stuff. I mean, it's, we're talking a long time ago. And um, so my grandfather worked in Philadelphia um, selling um, vegetables and things like that. And somebody paid him with a pony, <laughs> a little <laughs> Shetland pony. And he brought it to our house in the back of his pickup truck. And that was my first pony. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is so yeah. cool. <laughs> and so she was a little Shetland. I don't know. She's probably like 11 hands at the most. And uh, she basically just mowed the, the yard and my mom would take me on little pony rides. And, you know, so that was my first pony. Her name was Peaches. She was the cutest. So that's how it started. And then we kind of went in and out of horses as a kid took, you know, lessons. We just had a little backyard barn and, you know, we yeah. had ponies and didn't have ponies over the years and, you know, just kept going. It was just something that uh, I always came back to and, you know, decided like, well, I don't really like anything but horses. So maybe I'll do this as a career. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how that started. That's fair, and, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. And it just kept going. So, you know, it's, it's my career as well. So, yeah, all horses all the time. So. so what is your career title exactly? What do you do? Um, so uh, I've been a professional instructor for 30 years, I guess. And I've been working at um, Delaware Valley University as, as an instructor. So I'm an assistant professor there since 1996. And then I've always freelance taught and I teach clinics and I so my specialty is biomechanics of uh, horses and riders. And okay. cool. um, yeah, so that's mostly what I teach. And yeah, so it's, so been, it's been fun. Biomechanics, what is that for people who maybe Sounds aren't so read? What does that mean for yeah. okay. equestrians? So, <laughs> great question. So biomechanics is basically understanding how the human body affects the equine body and vice versa. So it's uh, one of the things I explain to people is um, bio, it doesn't matter if you want to say you're a hunter, a jumper, a games rider, a western rider, gravity and physics uh, treats us all the same. And so understanding how to use gravity and physics to your advantage uh, so that your body and the horse's body kind of work together instead of against each other. So, you know, that's, that's it in a nutshell, but there's a, a lot of anatomy, both human anatomy and equine anatomy and understanding how they kind of work together. That's so cool. And so, so for, how did you get it? Oh, I was going to ask, is it for all disciplines that you teach this? Yeah. Class? So actually I'm a centered riding instructor. So that is um, a certification that uh, covers any discipline. Again, it's really about balance and understanding how to use your body to speak the language of the horse. So, um, yeah, so I've been studying that, um, since 2000. So it's cool. I get to do a lot of clinics and, and do a lot of, uh, education both for myself and for other people. And so it's, it's been, it's been fun. Do you it's travel been... like long distances to teach these? I clinics? don't because I, I could, but I can't because of the barn. <laughs> so I yeah. think it's like pretty local. Okay. Um, but, um, going maybe to Switzerland in June to attend a clinic. Um, so there's a, there's about half, half the certified instructors are here in the U S and the other half are in Europe. Oh, wow. And so, you know, there's opportunity for education all over. So 
I'm hoping as I get older and semi-retire, I can do a bit more so I can travel a little bit more. Yeah. So how did you get exposed to mounted games? Where did games come into the mix? So um, I think Fred touched on this, but Patty Nagy, right? So uh, we got the kids in Pony Club and Patty was at the DC at the time. I'm the DC now, but um, yeah, she was like, Sure, join our pony club. We do this thing called Mountain Games. And we were like, what is that? <laughs> so, and you know, to be honest, I was a, you know, a little bit of a DQ, which is a dressage queen for, you know, those that you know, mean. <laughs> and, and I'm not gonna, um, I will admit, at first I was like, this is crazy, you know, and, and these, you know, it, it's just, it's a lot, you know, there's a lot yeah. going on and it's fast paced and, you know, sometimes there's some rough riding, but that's true of any discipline. Yeah. But, but it, you know, in the beginning I was like, oh my God, this is, this is crazy. Who's doing this? You know, my kid is doing this. What's happening? <laughs> and then when I really got to go to a competition and watch, I was like, wow, these people are actually amazing riders. Yeah. This isn't rough at all because, you know, I'm sure we've all witnessed, um, Jim Connor and barrel racing and, and, you know, again, I'm not picking on any discipline because it's, there's, there's stuff in every discipline, but in general, my impression of that stuff was that they are uneducated riders that ride really rough. And so of course I thought, you know, well, games is probably that same kind of group. And then when I yeah. really got to see it, I was like, no, these people are really amazing. And, and they don't ride rough and they, yeah. you know, they, they, I don't know. It was just amazing. It so definitely I think, so. I, yeah. I think it's it's shocking how I feel like there's a lot more rideability required in mounted games versus a lot of the Western disciplines. And I actually yeah. had a conversation last night. I had to talk with a guest that's coming up that kind of specializes in a kind of training, but has never heard of mounted games. And so I'm like kind of briefing them. I'm like talking about yeah. like, well, they're yeah. asking these probing questions. Like, what is your greatest challenge? If you were to just like point out like one of the more difficult like instances you have to work through as a rider and the, you know, they were like, so is it like barrel racing in Western Jim Conn? And I'm like, honestly, I think it's very, very different because we require the horse to mentally be so present as you're riding and so right. readable. And the rider has to be so conscious of that. Like, so I can see where the centered riding kind of might play yeah. into even how you school oh, with games. Big time. Yeah. Because the, the more you can use your body, the less you have to use your hands. Yeah. And anytime you can stay out of the horse's mouth, you're, you're not disrupting their balance. Mm -hmm. which gives them the chance to be uh, freer and more athletic in their endeavors. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, I actually wrote an article for the center riding newsletter about games because the, the topic they were asking people to send articles about was, you know, how do you use center riding in your everyday riding? Cause it, cause there's people that teach it from all different disciplines. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of a funny little article I wrote about. When did you write that? Is that open to the public? Oh, um, last year, I yeah, I think so. It's probably on the website. I think you can access the newsletter. It might be members only. I'm not. I don't really remember. But oh. um, yeah, you know. But but the idea really with games too is uh, you got to keep your center of gravity down and back. Yeah. And if you do that, you're the least disruptive to the horse. And, you know, if you want to make a good end turn, you can't overweight the front end. And I see a lot of riders that actually, they do kind of lean out over the neck to move a mug, to make yeah. a turn. And you're, you're planting the horse's front end. And so then the back end will fishtail. And so you're sure. not going to have as good a turn. So that's what I love about games for me is the technicality of it, both with the riding and the play. Yeah. That's what like I love the most. But, you know, understanding, like, if you if you can stay back and off the front end, you're going to get the horse coming around much easier and then pushing out of the turn. So, you know, I love um, applying what I understand about biomechanics to to the to the games. Being conscious, I think, of how heavy certain elements of your like, even just your head. is so like yeah, there's yeah, a lot of weight there. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Just looking down. Exactly. And, you know, I, that's a big thing, even with my jumping riders, you know, if you, if you drop your eyes, you're, you're, 
your head weighs 10 pounds and it brings your weight forward and then your shoulders have to come forward and then the weight comes out of your heel and then mm. your horse stops or turns, you're, you're becoming a lawn dart. So yeah, so much of it is, and I, it always amazes me too, because I use a lot of our games ponies for, you know, just regular lessons and teaching riders to turn and look where they're going, but that the games ponies will just follow your eyes. Yeah. Like so much more than, than your ever, every horse will follow your eyes. But the games ponies are like, so on that. And, uh, you know, the people always think that's cool. I'm like, okay, just look to the right. And you know, the, the horses turn and they're like, Oh, that's amazing. Like, no, that's just good go games ponies, you know? <laughs> it's, it's interesting too, when you're bringing a pony along and you have a pony that's very sensitive and you find that like looking at the balloon, looking at the barrel, looking yeah. at a cone and the pony just really like gets drawn to it because you don't realize how much when your body just barely changes, like they can sense all of that. Right. Right. And the other thing too, is when you're really staring at something and you know, that, let's use the balloon as an example. So the balloons are moving around and you're staring at these balloons that are moving around that, that, um, hard stare like that mm -hmm. creates tension in your whole body. And we call that predator eyes. Like even when you stare at your horse, if you're trying to catch your horse in the field and you come at him with like too much intention, he's like, oh, see ya. Right. Because there's, there's, a, there's energy behind intention. And so when you see riders having difficulty and, and, you know, it naturally kind of draws us in and we look down and if you start getting like too intense, that um, tension goes through your whole body and goes through to the horse. So the horse automatically responds with tension back. Yeah. And anytime the horse comes out of a, you know, a learning state of mind, he's just reactive rather than learning. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, there's a lot of um, little nuances like that that can really make a big difference in training and, and helping your horse or pony get get over something that they're fearful of, you know. And you, yeah, I I didn't really realize, I think, as a rider, how much impact my weight has. And you're always like, I'm conscious of it as like a trainer and you're like conscious right, of right. how you're distributing yeah. yourself. But I started doing jujitsu and in jujitsu, oh, cool. people go into mount. And so they, they would be like on top of you and everything is about how you disrupt the balance of the person that's on top of you so that you can get them off basically. Yeah. And yeah. I would go on mount with some of the ladies I was practicing with and they would be like, you're not heavy enough. You're not heavy enough. And I'm like, I don't want to crush you type thing. Yeah. And then they would get on top of me and it could be someone who's like five, two and I'm six, one. Right. And when they just relaxed and sunk their weight down the way yeah. that they, they literally just pin you like the weight has so much power yeah. over yeah. how you can move and what you're able to accomplish. And it like, for me, it just radically clicked. And I was like, oh my gosh, like when we say sit deep and like relax right. and like get right. heavy in your seat and never right. made sense until I couldn't get this person who's five foot like off of me <laughs> oh, because she so did cool. it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're exactly right. Because you know, when I, I would tell the kids and they were little and their ponies would get hot at the line, I'm like, we call it sit in toad position. So you, you kind of slump and you try to make yourself like deflated yeah, because yeah. if they go, ah, then that brings your energy up mm -hmm. and your center of gravity up. And then that makes the horse even more up and, and ready to go than like, you know, and just kind of like exactly yeah, making yourself heavy and, you know, it's not going to work a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time, but it'll certainly be better than getting tight and having your center of gravity. Yeah. High. So that's cool that you make that, uh, that you made that. Yeah, it was, it was so neat to realize how, how much it, it made it hard for me to use my body and have energy flowing through your body when somebody's like tense on, on you. Right. And you're trying to roll them off very easy because you can just very easily manipulate the energy yeah. in your body and do yeah. something. But if they sit like that, like heavy and they're, they're just that weight about them, yeah. it is very hard for you to, and I think about the horse's back and I'm like, okay, so like my horse being very wired and he's pretty hot. I'm like, well, if I were to relax and create more of that dead weight, in theory, to me, it would it would be the same sort of atmosphere. And he's like, oh, and he kind of feels that structure. And, and there's just, I don't know, a quietness about it. And none yeah. of it, it just, it was so interesting when it finally clicked for me. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> right, right. That's so, that's awesome. I know. Like yeah. when you were saying that, it made me think about Elise when she was little and she didn't want to do something. And I'm talking to you when she was like two or three, we would say she would melt onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> she would liquefy and you could not pick that kid up even if she was like 
30 pounds. She was like immobilized. And so exactly, it's though. Thing. I didn't realize that was a jujitsu move. So it's no, right? That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's wherever we can draw all that learning. Yeah, right? I know. I'm such a nerd because I'm always like so excited to like connect dots from different yeah. aspects and how they relate back to, you know, writing and, and all that stuff. So. Right. Yeah, and just in more ways that we can make it make sense because then you yeah. can explain it better, which is always right. so important. Right. But right. okay, so centered riding, and then you have kids who get into games, and you're yep. like, huh, I think I want to do this too. Yeah. And so where did that start for you? Um, so Fred started before I did. And because I don't know, I, I, I think I wanted to do it, but I was so busy, like, still trying to, you know, event and do dressage and do all these other things. And I was like, I don't have time to do another discipline. <laughs> and so he started. And then I, I can't remember how it came about, but I rode um, an old Appaloosa pony that belonged to the to Michelle Hasing and her family named Blaze. I don't know if they needed a rider or something. He was like 105 years old. Aww. He had been an ex barrel pony. And he was so awesome. And it was so fun because he was just like, you know, he had really good turns. Because I think maybe I did it on Alan and Alan was great, but he's, you know, kind of more clunky. And then when I rode this pony who was, you know, much more agile and I, and I felt like I played a little better, I was like, oh, this is, this is actually kind of fun. And, and then it was actually really cool be, because, you know, all of this riding stuff is uh, my job. It was really fun to do a sport that I was knew nothing about, was really bad at, and like could just be nobody and just like have fun. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because, you know, you get to a point where you go to a horse show or you go anywhere and there's people that you know and you feel like people are always, you know, oh, well, she teaches, so let's watch her compete. You know, there's always yeah. like a lot of that. And this was like, oh, I can just have fun. It, it actually is the first time that I could have just fun with horses since I had been a kid, I think. Because Aww. I enjoy it, but it, but it's, it's work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it was fun for it to just be fun. Yeah. And uh, so then I was like, oh yeah, this is fun. <laughs> I and forgot, I think it's I forgot that riding can be fun and not so serious all the time. Right. And yeah. it, it keeps it fresh. I mean, really? I know every other discipline, like you're doing different things, but I think eventing, like I've got core things that I'm practicing. Right. And it's almost repetitive in the way right. that we condition and the way that we get the horse, you know, legged up for that. But right. amount of games, it's like, all right, I'm bored with mugs. I can do this. Or I'm bored right. with that. I can do this. There's so exactly. many different things to practice as a yeah. rider right. and the rider horse combo. Yeah. It's just, so now I'm like totally addicted. Now I don't do anything else <laughs> <laughs> because now I'm like, I don't have time for those other disciplines. Yeah. <laughs> work on my games now. So kind of funny <laughs> this so. total same boat i don't know it's like an addiction right i'm like all right let's yeah. organize some competitions let's let's promote let's get this out there because yeah. you get to a point in life where you're like i do so many serious things all the freaking time that yeah. i want something fun that i look forward to <laughs> and i've just seen it um do amazing things not only for my own kids but my you know my regular students because uh, they i find that kids a lot of time kids are afraid to make mistakes and they, you know, if they come up, I get a lot of kids that started doing IEA or hunters and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, you know, you make a mistake, you blow your diagonal, you blow your lead and you're, you're kind of done. Or you think you rode well and you come out of the class and you didn't pin and they don't really know why. And, and, you know, they start doing games and they, the first time they like miss something then, and they get really upset about it. And you're like, no, oh, no, you just fix it and you just keep going, you know, and to exactly. see how it sounds like such a small thing, but, but I think kids today are so afraid to make mistakes mm -hmm. and like, that's all part of this sport. Like you, you yeah. mess up and you keep going because that's just the nature of the sport. And they learn like, Oh, Oh, riding can be fun and I can do hard things. Look at me. So, yeah, right. you know, it's almost part of the technique of the sport is even being able to fix things quickly right. and get back on and that's right. almost a skill in itself yeah absolutely yeah so, it's like having that backup plan and being able to react to it so things don't go right 
what if things don't go right for every team though, you know? And now right. it's like, all right, how do I reconstruct this as quickly as possible? Right. And right. I didn't plan on vaulting or, or mounting this race, but now I have right. to. And right. so, yeah, it definitely, it teaches you that, okay, things might not go perfect, but how do I make the best of the situation? Because I right. can still come out on top if I do. Right. So it's, and and it's so it helps fun. you, like getting back to the biomechanics, it helps people realize, because I find a lot of riding is um, taught for, the end result. So it's like, okay, you're supposed to be here and look like this. And yes, there is a certain amount of this is where you're supposed to have your hands and your leg and all that when you're learning. But I find a lot of riders are very rigid and ride very mechanically. And then, you know, you, you introduce them to games and you let them learn, like you can go way outside of where you think you're supposed to be and you're not going to just fall off and yeah. you learn that ban or balance is dynamic. And then their regular riding gets so much better because they've learned that they can move around and do things at a high rate of speed. So riding, just holding your equitation and jumping a course now seems like a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even the kids that don't do games competitively do games in their lessons because I think it's just yeah. Helps. And that's such a good point too. Like I hadn't really thought of it that way, but it, as a rider, like when you get really good at riding, let's say you don't even have instruction, but if you are genuinely good at staying on and you're good at being balanced with the horse, ultimately your position is going to kind of fall into place. There's a reason right. that that's right. the right position exactly. that we tell people to have. <laughs> but but it's taught backwards. Do you exactly. Know what I mean? yeah. It's like, oh, you're supposed to be here. And so like to just learn organically, like to, to find your seat and find your back. Like look at um, um, Jay... Clark, is that his name? Yes. He's amazing. You know, he's know. been riding for like nine months. I know. <laughs> no, he's incredible. He's such an athlete. But it's a great example <laughs> of like just ride, you know, riding and your body will find balance. Yes. If you let it, you know. Yeah. So, and then you can clean it up. That's what I tell the kids. Like if you can, if you have balance, then you can clean it up to go in the show ring and, 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 you know, do your thing. But yeah. there's so many kids that you know, they don't get the opportunity to actually ride. Yep. They just pose up there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's not really riding. But I had my first experience with that. There was a rider that, um, that I had met that had competed in, in college and had done the hunter thing. And I was like, oh, come play games. And I didn't really take into account that even though you're competing there, the horse has already been warmed up. The horse has already been schooled. You're just, you don't really tack. You don't really take care of right. the horse up to that point. Right. And then things like half halts, balance, like they're just, there's a place that they're comfortable, but everything outside of that, they just haven't been exposed to because yeah. it's, it's about how it looks. Right. And there's right. so much right. more. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. and honestly, it's a shame on instructors, I think, who aren't putting the time into not, not all instructors, but people who maybe advocate for that, like just get them up there and make them look pretty. Like, yeah. no, we need to dial it back. Like you got to learn what you're doing, why you're doing right. it. Right. So what's going to make you better? <laughs> That's why challenging ponies right. uh, is so huge to have the exposure of riding a pony that maybe isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. because it's going to put you in those positions and teach you how to maybe deal with it. Yeah. But so your first pony for games. Um, was your so, actual pony though like the first one that you got for you the first one i got for me was nemo mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know if you guys remember him and violet yeah. um had him for the past two years and and he was he was great he was uh came from down south from um i think it was the butler family when the worlds were in kentucky like a lot of them got ponies and brought them up for those teams coming over so he was one of those and and he was great and, um, you know, I liked him because he was safe. That was the other thing, too. I, I was like, I just want to have fun. I'm not out here. Yeah. I don't want something that's going to rear or buck or be goofy because I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah. And, and he was great for that, you know. And then um, I don't know if Caroline went to school or I, I forget. Or she didn't want Barry to do open anymore. Uh, which I can understand because she was yeah. old. She's like, I don't want to push her and, you know, it's too much. They're like, you should, her and Elise, you should try Barry. I'm like, no, I like Nemo. He's safe. You know, <laughs> they're like, just try her. I'm like, all right. So I started riding her and, you know, I was, at first it was, she was still kind of going at open speed. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to fall off because she's so narrow <laughs> and she turns so tight. 
But then, you know, I started to get used to her. And, and then I was like, oh, this is so much better. Because you got to kind of push Nemo along a little bit. Yep. And I thought, like, I don't want to play any faster than this. And then when I got Barry, I was like, oh, this is so much more fun to go faster. <laughs> My girls were like, see, we told you. So, yeah. So now, so, so now I ride Barry. But. It's you do so, so well on yeah. her too, even like with the speed. Cause I remember when I first started, I think you were still riding Nemo. And then I kind of watched like the transformation of yeah. you on Barry all of a sudden. And then you were just like, you stepped up your game like overnight. It was like, oh, wow. Right. I know a lot of people when I was still riding Nemo, they're like, you need a faster pony. I'm like, no, I don't. He's great. I love Nemo. And now I'm like, oh, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he doesn't. He's awesome. But, but I, you know, when I ride him now, because we just got him back from the lease and I was like, you know, I'm like uh, thinking, well, I don't know. I mean, Barry's getting old. Maybe I'll go back to Nemo. He is smaller. Maybe I'd be able to vault because I was, you know, I'm trying to work on that. Yeah. And the kids are like, you're not going to want to ride him. And so then I rode him and I was like, oh, he's so slow. I'm like, <laughs> did he slow down since he left? They're like, no, he was always slow. <laughs> okay. So anyway. So I won't be running people, but um, yeah, Bar- Barry's my queen, but she is getting up there in age. But she, if you, if I didn't know how old she was, there's not one thing about her that makes me think yeah. that she can't keep going. You know, she, she feels great. And she's how old is she? Around. Um, 33, I think. Wow. Yeah. People. People that know her from when she was down in, you know, down south could probably correct me if that's wrong. But I think the last time we calculated it, she's 33, I think. Some ponies, though, they like, you know, the structure and the consistency of being in a program. And I feel like you take them out of – so my era chip, that my first competition pony, and had him in games for 20 years or something ridiculous, really until he passed away. But I I took him out of games when he started getting a little bit more asthmatic and he was like 34 at the time. And within like eight months, he just went downhill like really dramatically because he just really enjoyed the interaction and structure. And it's just like, yeah, when they're that age, it's best to keep them in work. And yeah, you know, it's hard to keep them in work if, if they're not like your, your, you know, active pony because and then you're working, you're concentrating on keeping whatever one you're going to compete in shape. So I was like, because I thought about, because um, at least retired Smokey from Open. Mm-hmm. And so I thought about maybe moving on to him. But honestly, she feels better than he does, even though he's not as old as she is. Yeah. And um, yeah, she feels great. And I, I just, I enjoy riding her. She's, I always say she's the best and she's the worst because... <laughs> She's amazing at games and she's amazing at what she wants to do. But if she does not want to do something, she is the worst. (laughs) We got her because, well, you know, Michelle Riley passed away Mm -hmm. and all those ponies got dispersed. And uh, this is, you know, what I've been told about her. And and she's always been notoriously bad about loading, but she used to load because she would get on the trailer with Misty. And yep. Missy, I guess, you know, went a separate way and somebody had, they had purchased her. We heard that she was for sale and the lease was like, oh, this is a good pony. We should get her. And, um, but she had been sold already. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then whoever bought her, they couldn't get her on the trailer. So she ended up staying at Michelle's. And at that point there were no horses and she was there with a lot of sheep. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I, I can't remember, I think I heard through the grapevine that she, you know, didn't, the sale ended up falling apart because of that. Yeah. And I called and I forget the gentleman's name, her husband, but, and I said, you know, well, we'll, we'll buy her. And I think to, basically he was like, well, if you can get her on the trailer. So, <laughs> so we went, we drove to Maryland and I just took a big bucket, a big bucket of grain and I think she was just living out with the sheep at that point. And I don't know. She was like, all right, I'm, I want that bucket. So she put her head in the bucket and I just walked her right onto the trailer. She didn't even take her head out of the bucket. And, you know, I didn't know her or anything. So I get her on the bucket. I'm yelling at Fred, like, close the ramp. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to turn around and try to run out or whatever. But still to this day, she is the worst about loading. Like, really? we have a whole system 
and she will she will drag Fred, and Fred's pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> She'll put her head down and just go, and you are you cannot hold her. So we have a whole system. We have to park the trailer in a certain place. We have to put like you know electrified rope up. We just like make a chute. Yeah. And that's the only way we can get on the trailer. If if she doesn't see that chute. Forget it. And even sometimes with the shoot, she'll drag him. But we have to close all the other doors. It's like a whole thing to get her on the trailer. So there was that little bit of me that was like, it would be really great to not have the stress about loading Barry to go to competition. Yeah. But if that's the worst she does, I'll, I'll take it. She's the What queen. about coming home? Does she come coming home? Coming home, she's like, fine, I'll come home. But <laughs> of course. But now um, uh, Belle, who's also another pony that was down, down in Maryland at one point, uh, we have her, one of my pony clubbers, uh, rides her. So now with Belle, she'll kind of follow Belle on the trailer like she must have followed Misty. So it does make it easier. But Belle had an eye operation, so she didn't go to the last one. And then we had to battle with Barry. Oh. <laughs> oh so much. But I mean, if, if you make a mistake, I try not to make any mistakes. Because if you make a mistake and you have to get off, she will beat you up with her head. Like she takes right? her head. And just like slams into you, like you Genevieve knows up. nothing about that. <laughs> I think it's a breed <laughs> thing. She is, yeah, she is all on for this thing. So anyway. it's yeah, it's know. definitely a type. Like you have to. I always tell people, maybe not the first horse. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the second or third. Oh. <laughs> like, I love them though. We have a whole. I don't know. Yeah. We have a lot of them. Somehow we we have a type, I guess. But no, they're just I, so I smart. The they're so smart, and they're like. Like, at least with her, she's like, well, I'll give it to you because I decided I wanted to, you know, it wasn't. Exactly. <laughs> You're always in Well, her. and it feels like such an accomplishment when they're actually on your good side. Like, you guys are in agreement and you're in alignment and you see, right. like, them thinking with you and you're like, okay, we're a power couple. <laughs> it's when, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. when you're doing this. <laughs> so funny. So, yeah. So, okay. So, you rode Nemo. Very different yeah. pony from Barry. What were your favorite races on each pony? Were they the same or were they different? Um, that's a good question. I liked three mug on Nemo and because I used to do inside turns with him. So that was kind of fun. Um, uh, I I really liked four flying, which I know everybody hates that race, but she's really good at, she just knows the games. Like she's yeah. just so good. So you can go, you know, blasting out there and, and basically gallop all the way up to the four flag and then stop, put it in and go. Uh, so she's, she's like, that's fun on her. That's awesome. But, yeah. Not very many people can do that or have a pony that that's that like, like adaptable. Yeah. That will like, stand there for second, you to put in. You know I mean? Yeah. Was, but she'll give you the second, but yeah. Um, yeah. She just knows the games. Like it's funny. Cause when I first started to ride her, I would ask Caroline, okay, what position did you used to go? But at one point, you know, she, we were practicing, she wasn't here. And so we were doing, what were we doing? It was either three mug or, or bottle or something and I wasn't sure what position so I played whatever and I was like oh yeah this is not the position because <laughs> she was clearly <laughs> like you are doing this wrong so you know she she knows the games but you, you got to play like the way that she wants you to play so it's, <laughs> it's hilarious she, how hard was it to transition her from vaulting to stirrup mount um not too bad actually she I can't play stepping stone mount she will not, that's the only one she will not stand for. And she beats the crap out of me when I'm trying to make her skin. <laughs> so I just don't play that one. But, but yeah, because I know that's a, that's a hard transition. A lot of the open ponies won't stand. But mm -hmm. um, I think the first couple of times she tried to move it, once she like figured out what I wanted, then she, and she waits, you know, for the most part, she usually waits until I'm on and then she goes, thank God, because that's always terrifying when they're moving and you're hanging off the side. So, yeah. But. So, coolest competition experience that you've had to date? Oh, definitely winning the last MA. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> that, was, that was that was that was so great because you know we've been like trying to get there, trying to get there, and this is the first year the whole team rode together because you know and Jenny rode with us too. We. Uh, Chris and Carl, you know, they had kids and also said so they weren't able to, to do them all. So it was the first year we could all ride together. And so it felt like every competition we were getting a little bit better, getting our groove a little bit more. And then to finally like 
finally win one. Oh, that was that was great. <laughs> so it's um it was just fun, you know, it's just yeah. it's fun when it all comes together and because I feel like we'd usually have a good Saturday and then totally blow it up on Sunday. So and were there heats for O25? The last one there was. Yeah. There was, right? Yeah. 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 How did that impact your play? Like, did you like the whole concurrent format? What is your I, I kind of did. I think I think it gave uh the ponies a little bit of a break in between and us a little bit of a break. So I I liked it. Um maybe not when it was freezing cold. <laughs> it, was, it was a cold <laughs> Saturday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, I mean, it was really long. It seemed like we were out there forever. So, um, but yeah, I like both formats. It's fun when, when all eight teams are running, but, but the, yeah. the heats were a nice change. Took I felt like it took the pressure off because Saturday, you know, you're just like, well, we just, you know, have to be in the top six if, you know, we can, yep. we can try stuff or, you know, it doesn't not, have to be perfect. Not push, yeah. That's the other thing too. I'm really, I'm really protective of Barry. And so, I, and it was, that was what was kind of cool about the last competition too, because, you know, like everybody else, they get fitter as you go. Cause yeah. coming out in May, they're not as fit as I would want them to be just because of the time and stuff. And so I let her pick her pace. Um, but I've been working on her fitness all year and I knew like, you know, it was the last one. This is our last chance. And so I, I really asked like her for everything she had almost every race on Sunday. And she, she gave it to me. It was amazing. So that that was just so cool to see that even at her age, she was like, "Okay, you want to go faster? Let's go faster." So, That's so awesome. that was really cool. That's so, something I'm definitely working like with my mom on. And actually, when we're in off season and we're like drilling and doing practices, I'll bring like a stopwatch out, and I'm like, "You're not actually pushing the way you think you are." Right, and right, like they right. get into that one race where they'll push, and I'm like, "There's yeah. so, like you need to practice kind of asking for that." One, it right. conditions your pony, but two, it gets you to the point where you feel more confident doing the skills if they pick up speed. Right, like, right you just don't right. even think about it. I think particularly in in O25, some people can get comfortable, but it's like, no, let's keep pushing. And so it's right. always been so cool that's to see Bomb Squad. Your yeah. whole team is always just like, all right, how do we step it up? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. We're always, you know, back and forth with them and time flies. And yeah, it's fun though. It's fun to have that, you know, that competition and, and to push yourself, you know, because I don't know, I, I'm a competitive person and against myself more than anything, you know, yeah. I want to. Yeah. I want to play faster. I want to play better. I want to put that down cleaner. I want to be able to get something out of the bucket. That's something I'm, oh, I can't, I'm so close. <laughs> I just can't do it. <laughs> but, well, and so this year on Bomb Squad, you don't have just one, but you have two couples competing, yes. right? Yes. Right? Husband and wife combos yep. competing yep. on the same team. How oh, does yeah. that influence things? How's that dynamic? I feel bad for Leanne, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hilarious. I mean, you know, Chris and Carl are, are like Carl's hilarious, and Chris is funny, and she couldn't be nicer, you know. So she, she's always our, um, our, our rock of calm, and you know, Leanne and I like to pick on Fred because that's fun, and I pick on Fred because you know he's my husband. We've been married thirty years next year, so wow, you know, we banter, and uh, <laughs> but but he. You know, I remember him telling me stories as because he you know, was like a three athlete um, player in high school and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we, he talks about how coaching has changed so much. And when he would play football, the coaches would grab your face mask and get in your face and yell at you. Right. So that's what he responds to. So that's what. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's it's intense and we yell at each other, but. That's how we talk anyway. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> We're just loud and, and very, I don't know. Passionate, crazy. right? Yeah. Right. So, you know, I, I think people that are more soft-spoken are probably a little put off by our demeanor, but I hope it's all in good fun. Like, I know, love the banter. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and it, you know, 
I find it impressive you guys can have that that relationship out on the field when you're in competition mode. But then as soon as you like step out of the arena, it's kind of like back to normal. Yeah, you're like, like, you know, back to whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, and we'll, you know, and it's it's all like it's all joking, and it's all sarcasm, yeah. and you know, I'll, we'll we'll just you know say what seems like really mean things to each other, but a lot of it is just like it's just our humor, you know. Yeah. So. So I hope it's, I'm sure it offends some people, but I hope it doesn't. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's funny. So I think having like a, a my, the whole can. team jokes that I have this little book, you know, so that somebody messes up and I'm like, Oh, Carl, you missed a mug at MA6 at one fifteen in my <laughs> state. <And I'm> like, <laughs> you know, we, we joke around like that, but, but oh, oh, we have, we have the, the best time. Like really the, we just have a good time and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. So, so how often do you guys practice the games? Not really that much. Yeah. Um, I don't like to practice on Barry because of her age. You know, mm-hmm. I always feel like every, every horse has only so many turns and so many, so we, we practice a little bit. Um, we used to practice a little more, I think than we do now, but mostly it's about just keeping the ponies fit. Yeah. You know, we'll practice a couple of games. When the when the race list comes out, we'll look at it and like, okay, well, maybe we should, you know, we haven't done that. It seems like, you know, the same the same games get set up all the time because it's just easy in the ring, but it's like, oh, we should probably pull out the bank racer, you know, that kind of thing. So right. yeah. But yeah, so not too much. Um we keep we keep the horses fit. We try to trail ride and we do a lot of dressage actually, just keep the horses supple and loose and that kind of thing. But I was going to ask, what do you do like as a conditioning plan, particularly early season, right? When you're starting to bring them back into their yeah. level of fitness, what well, is kind of your approach? Long, slow distances, very boring. <laughs> a lot of walking on a long rain. <laughs> mm-hmm. So especially with Barry, cause she's older. I try to give her um, the winter off, but just keep her in, in enough work that she stays loose. Yeah. But um, you know, it's cold and, and, you know, it gets dark early. And so usually there ends up being a month or two where we're not hardly riding at all. Mm-hmm. So I try to start riding her in March and I just start with walking and I try to walk her four to five days a week for 15 minutes. And then the next week, 20, and then, you know, and I keep adding five minutes. And so it's, it's really um, not very exciting, but you know, it's better to do less frequent, but more like shorter, shorter time but more frequently than just getting on for an hour once or twice a week. So I, yes. you know, I try to get them out, even if it's only 15 or 20 minutes, walk around the property, you know, there's some hills, maybe have a little trotter canter around the ring when they get up to that point. But I, I try to condition her really slow. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't, you know, break. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like it's good for their mind too. I really, yeah. in the past couple of years got to, I like the 25 minute, 30 minute rides. Yeah. And obviously you do some longer conditioning, maybe once a week, you know, right, build right, up right. fitness, but just 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I can get so much done. My horse yeah. stays fresh mentally. They're like, okay, tomorrow, what do we have? Like, it's not, right, right. It's so grueling that they're like, oh, and they resent me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and even with the kids and stuff, we'll do, we try to set up like drills and, and like obstacle patterns that involve mm-hmm. game skills, but it's not running through a game up and back every time. So like one of the ones that I like is I'll put the poles on a circle. And so they have to move the mug on the circle. So they're working on their 20 meter circle, but they're also moving the mug. And so... And they do it on the outside, so they're moving with the right hand, and then they have to do it on the inside. So, you know, they're still, like, playing games, but they're doing other things. So, and, you know, as we get more into this, yeah, as we get more into the season, then we we also do, like, some gallop sets and stuff, too, for fitness. But, yeah, it's very slow in the beginning. Have you ever dealt with a pony? I'm thinking about Poppy here. But a pony that is new to games, but is kind of fixating on objects and and a little bit more like, oh, don't get near that. Oh, it's a barrel. Don't get near that. Like, how did you, how would you approach it? I kind of have my way that I, but I'm like, all right, is there any other ways that you can go about it? Um, I mean, the biggest thing is not to make it a thing. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of times, you know, like um, 
it's it's common when you know let's say the horse is spooking at a barrel or something and you know we we've all been taught like the mindset of like oh i have to i have to get him past it i can't let him win i you know that kind of stuff and so now they're afraid of the barrel and then if people get after them to get over to the barrel now they're also afraid that they're they're going to get in trouble because they're afraid does that make right. sense so yeah. Yeah. I always say you might win the battle, but you lose the war. Yeah. Sure. So the more you can just, I say pe to people, ride the horse where you can, not where you can't. So if let's say the barrel is, you know, down at the C line and you can't get past the B line without the horse starting to look, well, you know, cut your, your turn before the B line. And then as the horse relaxes, you go a little further. So it's pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. So mm -hmm. And, you know, you just don't make it a big deal. And if the horse is looking, you just, you know, oh, we were going this way anyhow. And you just eventually it won't be a big deal. But, yeah. you know, when people make things a big deal, then they are a big deal. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> it's just time, you know. It's, yeah. I think the biggest thing is uh, understanding that the slow road is really the quicker way. And there's no quick fixes, you know, and, yeah. and sometimes, you know, you can use some positive reinforcement and, you know, the horse might almost like targeting, like in, if the horse touches the barrel, you give him a treat and that kind of thing. And that can help too. And, you know, there's a, there's a place for that as well, but, um, you know, mostly just don't make it a thing <laughs> and eventually <laughs> it won't be a thing, you know what I mean? But it might take a while. Like, like Charlotte is, you know, she still doesn't like balloons and things like that. So but, you know, she's getting used to it and, and um, Isabel had her and worked on it with her mm -hmm. son too. And, you know, eventually, and, and also, you know, sometimes like if a horse has a real issue with something, it might be better to just like, you know what, well, I'm just never going to play balloon because for this <laughs> particular horse, they just can't get over it. And the anxiety right. that it's creating, trying to, is maybe just not worth it. Like not sometimes right. it's okay to say like, you know what, this this horse just can't cope with this for whatever reason. Cause I always say like, you just don't know most of the time what, what has happened to a horse in its past. Mm -hmm. So I always give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, okay, you know what? Maybe then you just don't play blue. Yeah. And then someday they might surprise you. And, and, you know, if they, if they feel they can trust you in a couple of years, you might go back to balloon and it's like a non-issue. Right? Yeah. So, you know, you just, you just never know. What's yeah, don't get so fixated, I think, on that goal. Yeah, that, that was generally for me, I think it's I started incorporating the elements into just general schooling. Right. Like we might right. set up some some ground poles. You have a letties. I find a lot of horses that get super fixated, like giving mm -hmm. them something intentional to start fixating on, like ground poles, cavalettis throughout the arena, yeah. and we ride a right. pattern and you pass barrels and you pass balloon and right. and now it's incorporated and then it's not it's not the object of our concern, right? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so the point similar. of the ride, and then all of a sudden it's not scary anymore. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you just have that stuff around and it's just always part of it. It's like even yeah. just with jumping, you know, you see riders that they flat their horse and then, oh, today is jumping day. And then, oh, my horse rushes jumps. Well, okay, because, you know, you're, you're making it a thing. Like just yeah. incorporate poles and a little a little cross rail in every single ride and soon it's not gonna be such a big deal. Exactly. So yeah. Now, my warm blood was really like that too, actually, but he was the opposite. He was so good over fences. He really enjoyed it. And dressage, honestly, he's very, very talented at, but he was just, he was kind of the heavy, luggy 18 hand warm blood. And yeah, yeah. he knew if I put the dressage saddle on, he's like, oh, today's that day. And he would just be so heavy. <laughs> yeah, if I put my yeah. jump saddle on, though, I'd get on and he's got this lofty trot. And I'm like, why can't you give this to me when I'm flattering right, you? Like, right, right, right. Um, but I started doing like some cavalettis and stuff and I throw poles out there and then he started like kind of perking up and he'd be like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. And and so yeah. interspersing it, we get so just as humans, we get so task oriented and we're yes. like, this is what I'm going to accomplish. And your horse is like, I just want to have fun. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. And it's true. And yeah, it, it's funny because as I said in the beginning, when I first watched games and was kind of semi horrified, now I look at <laughs> modern dressage. And I think those poor horses. <laughs> yeah, right. They just grind them and drill and drill and drill and drill, mm -hmm. and they just look miserable. You know the yeah. There's not too many horses competing in upper at the upper levels that you look, you watch them and think it looks like that horse is enjoying that. No, exactly. That's sad. That's sad. Yeah. 
Yeah. So little like hacking and doing, and that's, a, so that's one of the things I try to encourage people with games, just try other things with your pony too. Yeah. Like yeah. don't just practice the games. And I always ask people how often they practice. Cause I feel like people who've been in the sport for a while, generally the answer is not that often. Like yeah. we do yeah. practice, but right. it's not an everyday thing. And I, there's some kids oh, that I talk yeah. to that are so enthusiastic and they're like, I practice every single day and I did mug shuffle five days a week. <laughs> like, <laughs> A poor pony, though. Yeah, he's gonna start to burn out mentally. It's yeah. not as fun anymore. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And then you know, and then they start not wanting to cross the line, and you know, mm -hmm. they start they start getting sour, and and you know, they can yep. get sore too. It's like games are hard. It's hard on them. And so, if you're not balancing that kind of work with other work, like yeah. hacking or, you know, light dressage or whatever, then you're grinding the same muscle groups over and over and over. Yeah. And the horse is going to get sore and then they're going to not want to do it. So, exactly. You know, that's right. important. But, no, make it fun. And yeah, yeah it, again, you don't have to make it to the point where your horse is just like, the, like you said, like even their haunches can just get so sore from doing turns over right. and over and over right. the, the sprinting that we essentially do in the sport. So. Right. Okay, so you have an adult and they watch you and they're like, oh my gosh, Stephanie's awesome. She's out there in 025. <laughs> oh, 025 is such a big division. I don't feel like I could ever do that. What yeah. are your words, confidence for them if they want to get into the sport? Well, I think like the creation of novice is great because there you can like learn the rules and get help and there's no pressure there. You know what I mean? Right. So I would say start there so you can just get your feet wet and figure out how to play the game. Mm -hmm. But even if you're playing just at the walk and the trot, once you know how to play and you know the rules and stuff, then, you know, jump in because I think 025 spans uh, all level. Yeah, I agree. So, and I think everybody's, you know, I think in all divisions, really, everybody's very welcoming and, and supportive of each other. I think 025 is more cutthroat than open. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> But no, I mean, I think everybody is supportive and, yeah. and, you know, I mean, there's all flavors of people and there's going to be people that are, you know, more friendly, less friendly, more approachable, less approachable, but you're going to find some people out there to, to, you know, hang with and, and yeah, just do just it. Just dive right in. That's right. Like, yeah. Get out there in the arena. Do right. like, the ring. I mean, we've all been there or we've all been beginners and just been real bad at it. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's okay. Like that's part of the fun is is you know improving so just yeah getting your body awesome. exposed out there so this, this is one of my favorite questions um, that we ask everybody so i'm okay. also curious to know what your answer is going to be but is there a tip or a trick for a specific skill that really improved your play once you mastered it hmm. specific tip or i would just say in general like every race is technical mm -hmm. and like when you figure out how you play it to try to play it the same way every time, mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, have a plan and, and execute. I'm trying to think of something specific. I always remember like just learning um, how to play mug shuffle and, and Mark Washburn used to come in and do some lessons and stuff here. And, and, you know, he'd always say like, keep it tight, keep it tight. <laughs> so <laughs> like, you know, keep your motion like, short and controlled and reach i think that yeah. was a big one and and so three mug you know even handoffs like like don't reach for it like you got to wait for stuff to come to you and again it gets back to like keeping yourself in the center keeping your center of gravity down staying in the center of the saddle when you start mm -hmm. reaching out you're starting to change the balance of the horse right and that usually and then you're ahead of them as well so if they veer for the handoff you're you're not in a position where you can do anything that's true. I yeah. think probably staying staying in the middle and not leaning out over the neck is probably right. So I'm as a it. certified centered riding instructor, <laughs> when you look at modded games, is that also kind of like your biggest tip or is there another one? Like if you're trying to do like your end turns or your cuts, like is there a tip that might help benefit a rider who's coming up in the sport? Yeah. Um, to understand that your, your body – controls the balance of the, the horse uses their head and neck for balance. And so the more you can um, not interfere with that, the, the better your horse is going to be able to manage his own balance. Mm -hmm. So again, like staying back in the turns, I see, I think because, you know, the nature of like going fast, we tend to get up out of the saddle, but 
But two points should really be behind the withers, not out over the top of the withers. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of riders riding way out over the front of their horse. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to put you in a more precarious position of falling off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, it, and it really slows your horse down because you're, you're waiting the front end. And so they keep their front end out of the way. So the power of the back end gets lost to some degree because the front end can't get up and out of the way. Yeah. That so, makes sense. Um, yeah, really, really understanding like when you, and we work on this all the time, but when you sit back, the horse should come back. And when you release forward, the horse should go forward. And when you just work on that simple skill, then when you play the games and you sit back around the turn, the horse will come back and, and come around their hind end a bit more. Yeah. Then you don't feel like you need to pull on the reins because every time you pull on the reins, you block the hind legs. So, uh, you know, we're always trying to keep that engine pushing yeah. <laughs> in these games. So the more you can allow for that, then just the better your horses. Can Keeping the energy circulating. And I like think, I always think of it like this ball of energy and it kind right. of be like real spread out or it's like real up and down. Yes, I exactly. like that you said, you're like, you're either sitting up or you're releasing, right. you're not like over their face driving right, right, the horse. Right, right. Yeah. Your, your body is letting the energy out the front or it's exactly. bringing the energy up and underneath of you, you know, where the coolest thing I think I ever felt with Barry was um, like playing, uh, I think it was ring race and, you know, usually like check up and get it and whatever. And I, and I sat up and she, she basically like cantered in place for two strides mm -hmm. while I picked the thing up and then just like went and, you know, just one moment like that. It's like, oh, that was so amazing. <laughs> you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, um, yeah. When you're in tune and you're right. Cause you're not, when that happens and my horse can get that way. Cause he's a very energetic passionate horse. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when we're in alignment and I mm -hmm. sit real tall and I just like barely like it's it's more of a suggestion, close your yeah. fingers, like he'll come back into that like real expressive, like up and down and then back out. Yeah. But you're right. It's not like I'm blocking his face or I'm fighting that energy because right. it has to go somewhere. It's just how do we make it so that our yeah. energy and our our body channel weight it. and seat is all channeling it. Yeah, exactly. but she was like so soft when she did it. You know, it wasn't yeah. like, because you know, I do my share of wrestling with her to bring her back. <laughs> but, you know, when you have that one moment where you really feel like, oh, that was, that felt awesome. It's and I think that was a an eye opener for me too. I was talking with Adrian and she gave me, I love some of Adrian's advice. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? But um, yeah, yeah. Hero earlier this spring when I still dealing with vaulting, still dealing with him, he would drift out so hard. He'd like pop the shoulder and run out the side. Yeah. And she was like, you know, think about where the energy is traveling. And really, if you're losing the shoulders, like get the shoulders back in gear, like start right. drilling it on the ground so that you get used to bringing your shoulders in, bringing your shoulders out. And it starts right. to become a, a facet of what we're training. Right. And you just, I, you know, breaking it down, like, okay, what is the missing puzzle piece? Because I can keep throwing stuff on top, but clearly if I don't patch right. that, like I'm right. not actually fixing the problem. Right. <laughs> the root of the issue. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, it was eye opening to start thinking about it that way, like breaking it down a little bit more yeah. just so that we have better play. But yeah, it's, that's yeah. That's what's so fun is to, uh, you know, when you have an issue, it to just keep trying to dig it down to to what the root of the issue is. Yeah. And then when it just like it meshes, like you and Barry have been doing, like it is so exciting to watch because yeah. you're right, you're out there and you guys, and it's so cool because she has that natural engine. And so she is driving, unlike Nemo, where you were like a lot more pressure yeah. on him. Yeah. But it's like when you two are in sync, it's really cool to watch. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, she's the best. Oh, she, uh, so any awesome. last words of wisdom? Or thoughts? Um, Anything you want to touch on that we didn't touch on? Not really. I mean, I think I wanted to tell you guys that your podcast is is really great. Like you guys are just, it's just so good. Your questions you. are good and Thank you so much. smooth and I don't know. You guys are just doing a great job. Oh, we really appreciate it. No, yeah, it's not. There's, yeah. a, there's a few that I haven't had a chance to listen to yet. The the nutrition person. Yep, that just came out. I yeah, I didn't have a chance to listen to that one yet. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear everybody's stories and just get to know people that you see around and but you don't, you know, know a whole lot. Yeah. It's really no, fun. it's it's I feel like it's been fun to see where there's commonality, where there's differences too. Like even regionally, I, I didn't really notice so many differences in how people maybe hand something off. Like do for bottle, do you guys all hand off bottle like the same way, for example? 
Uh, or do you feel like some people are top, some people are bottom? No, no. I, I always come into Fred, and I have to say, that is the one game that she always bolts the hand off, and I can't figure <laughs> out why. Oh, no. But it's always horrible. But, you know, I just basically just stuff it. <laughs> but Take but it. I hold it in the middle because I feel like it it's so easily, like, flips. I'm the same way. Yeah. Well, I can't figure that one out. But I agree. And I put it down, like, a lot of people put the do the swing, and I, I like – place it like with the bottom of my hand that's what I, I do too this swing I've tried to figure it out I gave up I can't do it that way I'm, I'm so glad to hear that though because I'm the same <laughs> way like my mom she's got the perfect windmill and I'm like I I can just jam the whole thing down into yeah, it and half the time we're good otherwise like I sat there and I did it like 15 times over and over and I was like this is just not where it has something to do with like your height and like your pony's height and then the actual height of the barrel itself like yeah, for some people it works and you can like actually extend your arm but for people with like long monkey arms like I I you can't do it really like <laughs> you have to almost like lean away from it to get it to no yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't we got yeah. some angles at play. <laughs> I can't do it. So do you lean off of Barry? Like to get like a hoop. Like your coins or, or your know, wins. Or... I'm working on it. Um, I've gotten it at home. I don't I don't feel like I'm good enough at it to try the competition yet. She she doesn't lean very much. She kind of stays <laughs> upright, so she's sort of hard to lean off of. And the kids are like, well, if you do it at the canter, she'll lean more. But, you know, I'm a little bit like, yeah, I feel like I'm going to fall off. <laughs> that's kind of scary um i'm brave to a point but i'm also not stupid so i know what my limits are and i've been working on trying to be stronger so that yeah. when i lean because i can lean down it's pulling myself back up yeah <laughs> so um so i'm trying to get that i i don't think i can vault because i have a i have like a couple in old injuries in my right shoulder and it just hurts too much to even just like hold my hand, like even just doing that hurts. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I keep thinking of Caroline Toby was, was like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. And we were talking about it at the last competition, but I hate to disappoint her, but I think it's good. <laughs> but I can still, you know, you can fast. speed mount though. Yeah. And I think even if I could vault, I probably would still be faster to stare by me. So yeah. I'm just so think. the last one, Four flag. You mentioned yeah. that that's one of your favorite races. So I'm curious, what is your technique for setting it down into the holder? Like if you were actually breaking it down, like how is your body position? How are you holding the flag? Um, so it definitely like point the finger to keep control mm -hmm. of it. And I don't know. I think, I think it's some people lean, lean off. off. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I, I think I like kind of hold her neck. And when I lean off a little bit, I don't, I don't even know, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I know it's, it's like, sometimes people, when they're doing four flag, they want to hold like the end. And obviously like the more choked up on you, you are, the more control you have to put it in that little hole. So I think I kind of hold it halfway. I think I used to hold it further back, but then it kind of moves mm -hmm. around a lot. So I think I hold it further down, which is, I think how I've been able to do it a little faster. I might have to try that because with Hero, I definitely, he gives me a second, but I'm like, yeah. I've always done the long stick, sit really deep. Yeah. So center your pony. Right. I find right. then I'm like, I'm a mess out there. Right. And, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and I guess it depends how good, if your pony will stand, you know, if you need yeah. to like stay in the saddle, because if you move, they're going to move, then, then you have to stay in the saddle, you know? But, exactly. Um, yeah. So anyway. All right. So this has been yeah. so much fun. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I wanted to say I'm one more thing because you were talking yes. about other disciplines that Elise and I are going to a working equitation clinic <gasps> on Friday. Where? With our games ponies because I think they're going to kick butt. They are. Uh, Cochranville, which is okay, in Pennsylvania. Southern Chester County. Yeah. So I have to let you know how it goes. I'm actually using Goody because I'm not dealing with putting Barry on the trailer. So. Oh. Um, and then Elise is going to ride Smokey, but so we're going to try some working act with our games pony. Oh well, yeah, She's find out. Really good at it, you know. If there's any like subject matter kind of experty people out there, let us know. Maybe we'll oh, yeah. get them on the show. That would be so cool. Yeah, yeah. The clinician is uh, I don't know, like the fourth ranked uh, working act judge in the country or something. I don't know. Really, She's pretty pretty good, I guess. So yeah, I'll see if she wants to 
Yeah, that would be so cool. Be take videos, take pictures. I've always wanted to try working equitation. I know. Every like... single time there's a clinic near me, I'm like already booked doing something else or yeah. at a games competition. So yeah, I'm so I excited. I love trying, you know, new things. So yeah, and, and I, I feel like working equitation is probably one of the closer non-games disciplines yeah. that's using the same amount of rideability right, that right. we need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be that's cool. so exciting. Yeah. You have to let us know how it goes yeah. and take some videos and maybe we can share it on our live in the following yeah, week. Yeah. That would be so cool. <laughs> be cool. Well, well, thanks, thanks for so having much. me on. Yes. Fun. Always fun to talk about games. <laughs> I know. Right. No, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was so like, I haven't actually sat down and heard your story or know more about like what you're educating in. And I didn't mm -hmm. know that you were a certified instructor. Yeah, so that fun. is so fabulous. So cool. yeah. yeah. It's really fun. Well, thank you so much. All right. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. Go on to our YouTube and boost our YouTube followers. We need to get to 100 YouTubers before we can launch our podcasting platform so people can listen in their cars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. So please like, subscribe, and share this. And thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Bye. You're listening to Unbridled with your host, Genevieve and Carly. Welcome to Unbridled.